Good evening and welcome back to another video. Today, as I'm sure you can tell from the title, we're talking about how you get QTS status in England. So QTS status, for those of you that aren't quite sure what it means, it is qualifying teacher status and it is the certification that gives you the ability to be a teacher in a school in England. Now, I'm going to do this from the perspective of someone that's gone through one of these routes. Um, I'm now a primary school teacher, as I'm sure you can tell from the other videos, but this is very much similar for secondary school teachers. However, if you really want an expertise, then I advise you to go and find someone else that is a secondary school teacher and has done it through that route as well. Um, I'm going to be talking about the most common routes today. So there's various different ways you can do it, but we're going to be focusing on a few of the following ones. So first off, we've got the school's direct training, which is the on-the-job training in schools. And that is one way you can get that QTS status. We're going to be talking about going down the PGCE route and getting your one year qualification after doing a university degree. And we're going to be talking about doing your three year university degree or possibly four year with the foundation course. They're the three, maybe four ways of achieving QTS days that we're going to be talking about today. When I was going through my training, I elected to do the three year university course. So I spent three years at Hull University and at the end of it came out with a degree in education with QTS status. That meant I was ready to go and apply for jobs to start my QT year, which is what I did. And as soon as I finished university, I already had my job lined up and I started the following September. I'm sitting in the same job now. I absolutely love it. And if any of you guys are thinking about getting into teaching, then I would say just have a go, go for it. It's the most amazing career. It's hard. I'm sure if you look at some of the videos recently, the last year has been incredibly tough for teachers, really hard work, but it's so worth it when you see the children progressing, when you see them doing really well, when you see them achieving those little goals that they have, and you know what, just go for it. Hopefully this will help you guys. Good luck for all of you that are on your QTS journey and you're aiming to get that QTS status in the near future. And if you've got any questions, please feel free to leave them down below. I love ask, hearing all about how you're doing. I love answering any questions I can help with. And if I don't know the answer, I'll get them from somewhere else. So anyway, let's get on with this. First job, we're gonna talk about Schools Direct. So Schools Direct training is basically what you might call training to be a teacher on the job, okay? So this is generally a one year course that is offered different teacher training providers and different universities. It can sometimes be coupled up with the PGC course, but sometimes it is not. So I'll cover the PGC bit in a few minutes time. But the school's direct training will teach you how to be a teacher while you are in a school. So over one year, you'll spend a lot of time based in schools and that school will be paired up with an initial teacher training provider or an ITT and they will work with you to make sure you are hitting all the goals and all the teaching standards throughout the year. So by the end, you can get that QTS status. To get onto one of these schools direct courses, you generally need the following. First off, you need an undergraduate degree or an equivalent degree, an equivalent level qualification. You need to make sure you've got a grade C in English and maths at um, GCSE level and what used to be, you'd need to pass a teacher skills test. Now, nowadays, they've scrapped those skills tests. However, that's because those teacher providers or initial teacher training providers now provide assurances to the government that the people on their course have a sufficient level of English and maths to be a teacher. So you need to make sure that you are capable of that level grade in GCC, because obviously when you go to do your training, there will be some kind of check on your knowledge of English and maths and you want to pass that, otherwise you'll be wasting your time. So make sure you are around that level of English and maths knowledge. Now, once you've done all that and you've got onto your school's direct course, what will it look like? So generally these courses are over a year and they will involve different placements at primary school. These placements will gradually build up throughout the year and you'll do more and more teaching throughout them. So by the end of the year, you'll be up to around about 80% of what you would normally teach if you were a full-time teacher. This means that by the end of the year, you are pretty much a full-time teacher and you are fully aware of what the job entails in terms of the commitment to your time, the commitment to your life, the commitment throughout the day, working in the evenings, working before school starts, that kind of thing. Schools Direct offers a salaried and a non-salaried basis. So when you are a Schools Direct, if you take the non-salary basis, then obviously you will not get paid for your work there. But if you pick to do the salaried option and you are looking to get a salary while you are teaching, you'll be employed on an unqualified teacher's pay scale. So I'll send a link up in one of those corners. If you will go watch that video, that is the pay scale for 2021. And that will tell you the roughly what you could be earning throughout your year as an unqualified teacher on the school's direct route. 
By the end of that, then often, if you have impressed at your school, then your school might offer you a job. If not, then you'll obtain that QTS status you'll have, and you'll be ready to start your NQT year as a full-time teacher at either the school you're at or a different school. So that is Schools Direct. Now, the only thing that can sometimes change there is Schools Direct can be paired up with a PGCU course, which I'm going to go into now. So you may choose to go down the route of getting a PGCU qualification with when you do your one year of training, such as a Schools Direct course. This can be coupled up with QTS status at the end, so you're officially qualified and ready to start your NQT year, which is being a newly qualified teacher in a school full time. So the PGCE is an international qualification that's recognised across many countries in the world that you are prepared and qualified to be a teacher. So it's highly recommended that you would go for it if you have not done your three year degree course that I'm going to talk about in a few minutes time. This international qualification will qualify you across many countries to be a teacher. However, I'd always recommend checking if you're planning on trying to use it in a different country because I'm not 100% sure of which countries do accept it, which countries don't. So double check for yourselves, please, if you're going to rely on that. Now, the PGC will mean that you are majority based in school. However, you are also going to university to do some training too. So there'll be again, same as your school's direct course, there'll be placements in school building up to around about 80% of its full-time teacher's workload. However, that will also mean you have things like essays to do and assignments to complete while you're at university. So you'll have some days when you're not in school, but you're actually going to university to do your training as well in there. So it's a nice mix of the school's direct route and of the university course, but again, it's squeezed into one year. So it is a lot of work, and from the teacher designer that did this, they absolutely loved it, but by the end of the year, they were really tired. However, you might think that actually that's really good because it prepares you to be a teacher, because if you can do the 80% of a teacher's workload on top of university assignments, then you're ready to be a teacher and you'll be able to do it. And I know from my experience on placements, you had a lot more work to do on placement with all your university work as well as the school work compared to what you do as a school teacher now. There are different things. There are things I do as a teacher now that I didn't want at university, but generally it's got a lot better and I'm a lot more on top of my workload than I was while I was at university. Anyway, I'm going to sidetrack. So PGCEs, you can have a go at them. They are squeezed into one year. Generally, you apply to do them through university and you'll have an undergraduate degree first. And so they'll do a one year course after you've finished your three year degree or four year degree, whichever degree you chose to do. Once you've got that PGC qualification, you'll get your QTS status with it. Generally, some courses don't offer it. So please double check when you're applying if you wanted to have QTS status too. I'd always recommend it's a sensible thing to do because you're going to put all in, put all the hard work in. You want to get that QTS status along with it. But once you've got that, you can start applying to be an NQT and a teacher full time at school. So that is PGCU covered with the school's direct training. Now we're going to go on to the final one, which is the one I did, which is all about the three year degree course at university. So the final way we're going to talk about today of getting QTS status is by doing a three or four year degree course at a university. Now, this is what I did. I went to Hull University and did a three year teaching qualification with QTS status. There was also the option to do a foundation year first before moving on to this degree, which makes it a four year course. However, I went straight into the three years. By the end of that, I got my QTS status and I was ready to become an NUT. So the way this worked is over the three years, you have three placements, one per year. The first placement was seven weeks, second was eight weeks, and the third placement was nine weeks. By the end of the third year, you're doing roughly 80% of the teaching again. However, that is also your first year where you're on your own. The first two placements, you're paired up with a fellow student on your course and you do your placement together. So you share the workload, which when I started, I was 18 years old, wasn't 100% sure that it was what I wanted to do. I always thought about it, but it was a bit scary the first time. So to have someone there with you on your first two placements to talk about and to bounce ideas off and generally share the burden was brilliant. So you get your, your buddy, the first two placements and the third placement, you're on your own, ready to have a go at being nine weeks. You're the teacher in schools. Every single placement you go on, you have, you're paired up in a class with a teacher and they are your mentor. You have your university mentor that comes and meets you generally once a week if possible. And then you can also talk to all the other professors, all the other teachers at the school to ask for any advice. So you get loads and loads of support. Now, obviously, the biggest difference between this course and the other ones I've just spoken about is the length of it. My course was three years, could have been four years. All the others are one year courses. So what do I think about that? Well, 
if in hindsight now looking back I would have loved to have got it done in one year and moved straight into teaching however would I have been ready at 19 to be a teacher I'm not sure I would have and obviously you need to, to get onto the PGC or the schools that you need that undergraduate degree so either way I'd have had to do three year course and then another year teaching so actually I'm glad I did it the way I did it because I got into teaching as soon as I could and after three years at university I was ready to be a teacher at 21 years old turning 22 I was ready to become a primary school teacher I'd done all my training I'd done all my hard work there were times when you look at the course and you think actually it was really spread out and there were things that I look back now and I think actually I did work hard on that but is it really useful to me well maybe not right now but that's because I've got all the training and as a primary school teacher, you are constantly learning, you're constantly doing training, you're constantly evaluating your practice, other people's practice, learning from each other. So I'm never ever gonna stop training to be a teacher. I'm still training now. And that's just part of what I love about being a teacher. I'm always working on improving myself as well as my class and the school as a whole. I loved my three year course. It was really, really useful. If you've got any other questions about it, then please drop them down below and I'll give you as many answers as I can. But there was a lot of assignments, there was a lot of presentations, there was a lot of placement over the three years, but it was a bit spread out and I wish it could have been condensed slightly. But yeah, those are the three most common ways that you get into primary school teaching. There's one final method I'm just going to mention briefly here, and that's called the assessment only method. Now, this is quite rare, but it's for those people that have taught as teachers on an unqualified basis for a long time. So at that point, they're very experienced, they'll have done lots of informal training at their school with their mentor, with their head teacher, but they've never actually got that QTS status. So at that point, you can do an assessment only option where you get assessed in partnership with your school and a local provider on your qualities as a teacher. And if you pass that assessment, then you'll get that QTS status and become a professional qualified teacher. However, this is a very rare option because you do not find many unqualified teachers teaching for more than the period of their training. Because while you're training on the school's direct or whatever else on a salaried route, then you are qualified, you are paid as an unqualified teacher. But obviously, as soon as you've passed that, you are then a qualified teacher and you move up the pay scale. So this is a rare option, but there is the assessment only option without any of the degree courses or the years to go through. But it's not something I'd recommend. I'd recommend going through the courses, doing your training the more formal way and then you're not risking either failing that assessment or just generally being stuck on the unqualified teacher pay scale and not moving up to where you deserve to be having the years of teaching. So that is the final method, but it's quite a rare one, so I wouldn't recommend it. And so that's where we're going to end today's video. I really hope it's been useful just learning about those three different methods you can do. There's many other ways of doing primary school teaching and of getting into it, but these are the three most common and most used methods for people in the United Kingdom and in England. As I said at the start, this doesn't mean I know everything. This doesn't mean only these routes are the best routes. It doesn't mean my recommendations are what you should do. You should do whatever you guys want to do. And please, please, please make sure that you do your full research before you apply anywhere. Because you need to know that the course is right for you. The university is right for you. The way you want to do it is right for you. And it's going to work for you, your family and whoever else is around. So hopefully it's been a massive help. If it has, then please let me know down in the comments below. If you've got any other questions, let me know and I will do my best to answer them for you. But anyway, thank you very much, guys, and I'll see you soon.